Welcome to the Peerless YouTube channel. I am Katie North and this is the fifth and final class in our flower series. And today we're going to be doing my personal favorite is orchids and also my mother-in-law's favorite too. So I think they're really gorgeous and they're so uniquely shaped and so funky colored and yeah. So I didn't know they grew, just grow everywhere in California and we live on the coast and I just, I found my first um, orchid bush. What? Did you guys know they grow in like full on bushes? It was amazing, it's gorgeous. And they have like this house right down by where where we live has like their whole front yard is full of orchid bushes. And I was, yeah, obviously really excited and took some pictures and um, yeah, they're, yeah, stupid pretty, really pretty. So I was very excited. Um, we'll be using all of the techniques that we've been learning throughout the whole series and putting them all together in this like last and final flower and yeah hopefully you're able to paint some flowers before mother's day for you know your moms or stepmoms or mother-in-laws and all of your favorite moms in your life and you know anybody because you don't have to wait for mother's day to give someone flowers either so uh yeah i hope you enjoy for your supplies you'll be needing peerless watercolors watercolor brush and paper a pencil double-sided tape scissors a paint palette, an extra fine detail brush, and a light box or a window. Set up for this, I took a picture on my cell phone of my fresh flowers, printed it out, and just went and outlined the very edges of the flower and every little detail that I could see. And then from that, I had my line, like line only drawing, and that is what I am transferring to my watercolor paper now. This is very convenient and easy to do if you are not comfortable sketching or drawing yet, and you still want to go ahead and use all the watercolors and paint. So don't let being you know confident with the drawing and sketching stop you. You could always do something like this. For our color palette today, we will be using Bubblegum Pink, Mixed Berry, Brilliant Yellow, Myrtle Green, and Dark Green. So right now I am cutting them off of my peerless sheets and then adding them to an extra piece of watercolor paper. And it's very nice to have this like reference to go back to. If you need to add more color to your palette or in the future would like to do a whole series of the same type of flower, knowing what colors that you use will save you a lot of time trying to refigure it out later. So very convenient. Uh, right now I am swatching out what each color looks like on its own before I mix and then I'm trying to find that kind of mix whatever that lime green would be. So I think I did mm, brilliant green, myrtle green and mixed berry to find like that main tone that I want. But right now we're, we're pretty much filling out our whole paint palette with enough paint and enough the of our gradient of color to do the whole painting. So the top 3 are going to be kind of different levels of the of the of the yellow and then working into a yellow a yellow green and then further down are the dark greens. So the dark greens are going to be varying differences of mix of the bubblegum pink and the mixed berry to de give depth and darkness to the green and for the shadows. So when we start painting, we will be have all of those colors available and there's gonna be a softer blend and transition between tones because we have them already all mixed pretty, pretty close to what we want. Now we are ready to start painting and we will be using the wet on wet technique between those lightest yellows and the limey green yellows, um, kind of between those first four, three or four colors in our, in our, color, um, in our color palette. So majority doing the entire flower, except maybe that little top petal leaf, whatever it is with the pink dots on there, leaving that out for later because we probably will make that a little bit more of white. But, and then if you look at your reference photo, and if anybody's just slightly darker in shadow, just put a little bit more green in that one. So the ones that you definitely want to stay bright, 
mostly more of a yellow. The ones that you want to stay uh, have a little bit in shadow so you can see the you know, depth of it. Start by making it just slightly more of the green, um, but we will definitely keep it very soft and blended very smoothly between those like two or three colors. So almost finished with this first wash and my camera angle kind of sucks here. There we go, I fixed it. <laughs> um, we're gonna start with the second wash. So m you wanna make sure that's probably pretty pretty close to completely dry. Um, I did start at the bottom last for the bottom flower of the last round, so I know that this one is dry. But as you can see, now I've moved down to my kind of second or third, you know, petals of, um, puddles of paint. And these ones are the same green, but they have a little bit of the purple. So you can see how muted of that green it is. That's just because I added just a drop or two of the bubblegum pink and the mixed berry to that lime green. And it just looks like a shade or two darker than what we were working with beginning. So now, again, looking at your reference photo with this secondary tone, this is the uh, a dry on dry. So that one dries dry, or wet on dry, and now going back over, and then adding the shadows in between each petal to kind of give them more def definition and where those shadows are with that muted green tone. So working around the whole flower, we'll kind of start doing some of those um, in, inner inner parts too, just adding a touch of color around there and kind of outlining them helps to kind of bring those out and kind of pop them. Um, I do pick up a little bit of the pink and kind of wet on wet technique just to give some little pink hues in there every so often. And yeah, so just still working around, doing your secondary tones. Um, between the muted green and a little bit brighter greens. And yeah, just this is also why having a reference photo is so easy. Like these flowers are so ne uniquely shaped and just adding that, you know, getting the depth and, and kind of shape of them is so tricky. So having that reference photo really helps until, until you are comfortable painting something like this on its own. But I think even for me, that would be years down the line. Maybe if I was like only painting flowers for a very long time, then maybe I wouldn't need a reference photo, but most of the time I do. I really love having a reference photo.
now we're working on the inside of the petals and I have a really diluted kind of um, soft amount of yellow mixed with the bubblegum pink to give it kind of that orangey tone and it's pretty diluted so it's pretty translucent with water and I just am barely kind of touching it into places where I want that little bit of flex of like that kind of I don't know that orangey kind of color just to kind of hit um, and then just barely putting it on the outer edges of those inside petals just to give them kind of more of like a cream yeah kind of like a cream tone and yeah just kind of touching up and you can also kind of touch up other things as as now before we do our next detailed wash Probably my favorite wash and we are using a pretty diluted translucent amount of the kind of dusty muted green and we're going to be adding the lines into our flowers so right when it's in the very center and the deepest and the darkest shadows you're going to want it to be more of a puddle and then the fan of lines coming out from there but really paying attention um, I add the lines on the reference photo. So if you guys look at the reference photo I provided, those are the kind of the lines you want to do. The lines just don't go come straight out from the inside of the flower. They kind of curve with the flower and shows the, the curve of the petals. And if there's any folds or, or movement in the petals, that's kind of where the lines are going to go. And it's going to help it look more realistic. And like, you know, if some petals are kind of turned towards you or torn away, those lines are going to tell your eyes which way it's going to go. So. It's pretty cool, like that one in the front there, how it kind of looks like a wave and it's cresting right at the top. That just means that petal that's coming towards you is folded there. So those lines kind of give you that directional shape that you're, what you're looking for. Now that you have those majority of the lines on their own, you're going to go back again and add a little bit more depth. So the ones that are darker and deeper in the petals, those get a second wash and kind of just really gently add in a little bit more so it's a little bit deeper. And then, um, yeah, just to kind of re reestablish those really sharp edges and the shadows. And do I change my camera angle? Oh, it's kind of kind of not the best camera angle again. But yeah, as you can see, it's a, a little bit darker, just a touch in those deeper areas. And that's just going to give it a whole, you know, another layer of, of detail and shadow. Just adding those little shadows. And somehow one of my video clips has disappeared and it is actually how I put in the pink dots and the freckles pretty much on the top of those petals. Um, but it's pretty simple. It's just a very highly concentrated amount of the bubblegum pink just by itself. Uh, and I do the little dots and freckles. You can see them here before I add my white highlights. I just did those little, the little dots around there and I'm so sorry that that clip is somehow disappeared, but yeah. Pretty simple, just really tiny little dots. And now I am doing my white highlights. And I, of course, I think I, I might have overdid them just a little bit. Uh, I think I liked the flower a little bit more before I did the lines. And maybe should have only just done the white highlights on the outside of the petals themselves. But it is, um, 
I do. I love my white highlights. So here I go, probably putting way too many again. But I think this turns out to be a gorgeous flower. And it's definitely, I love orchids. And they remind me of my, my grandma. And they are my mother-in-law's favorite as well. And they are my favorite too. So they're just, they're so pretty. And if you ever have a chance to go to an orchid farm, they are, it's like, it's incredible how many different species of orchids. There's even one that smells like chocolate, which is so crazy. I know, I just, I had no idea. And it's just like tiny little orchid and it smells exactly like dark chocolate. It's so cool. But anyway, I hope you absolutely in loved our watercolor flower series and are able to paint with your mom or for your mom or your mother-in-law or your best friend that just became a mom, whoever it is. Um, yeah, just I hope you enjoyed and thank you so much for watching. And that's it, and that is the end of our flower series. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any of your completed flowers and you would like us to see them, just like put our hashtag in there, uh, Peerless Watercolors, and on Instagram, we would love to see and repost and share and just part of our whole Peerless community. So make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends, and we will see you next time.